Chances are you'll have shot and eaten a game bird powered by Marsdens. The feed company has been supplying keepers since 1954 and helped rear millions of birds. Before Paul Childerly, deer manager and gamekeeper, receives this year's pulse, he's been invited to have a look around the Marsdens Mill. Many feed companies have uh, slogans, have strap lines. Our initial uh, strap line was produce birds fit but not fat and these birds need to be strong, well feathered and to fly very well and that's what we try to do and that's what we do do. Like every keeper, Paul knows that what he puts into his birds is what he gets out. But what is he putting in? Firstly, there's wheat which needs to be sampled and checked. What's the point of dipping each load that comes in? Oh, I'm looking for good quality grain. Yeah. Uh, no split grains. No excessive chaff, looking for any contamination with ergot. Right, yeah. And if it's no good at all, will the, will the whole lot get rejected? Or? Yep, yep. If we find ergot in it, even one bit of ergot, I really? take it across. So what is er ergot then? That's a, a fungus that grows on the, the wheat. Yeah. Um, like I've got some in the office. OK, yeah. To show you. Yeah. Yeah, this looks a good lot. I reckon this uh, makes some bread with this. <laughs> <laughs> right, get out your way. To enjoy a complete diet, the pheasants and partridges of the UK are going to need a bit more than wheat. This is where more than 60 years of development has taken Marsdens. Soya, oils, alfalfa are all used in different combinations. And the power protein punch is delivered by fish meal. Yup, those high flyers actually come from low swimmers. What actually is fish meal? What is it? A fish? Is it actually the extract of fish? It, yeah, you know, no, it's a good question. It's a good question. I mean, in the past, fish meal would be whole fish that have been processed to produce fish meal. What, but what type of fish? Uh, small um, uh, sort of sand eel, oh, uh, yeah. whiting, uh, this type of fish. Yeah. But increasingly, because of environmental concerns that, you know, we were fishing just purely for fish meal, yeah. increasingly now all of our fish meal would be sourced from sustainable production. And that is basically material that is the byproduct from human fish filleting, so right, yeah. uh, uh, filleting fish for human consumption. So like the bones and the so, head. Exactly, and the... so and also a lot would be coming from the Scottish salmon industry. Oh right, yeah. So again where salmon is being produced. So you're using something so, yeah, from, from exactly. waste material. So right? what is left after the, the, uh, the fillets are taken off yeah. is still a perfectly good protein source, a yeah. good mineral source, a good energy source. Yeah. So we would be taking that material um, it would be processed and ground so it's in a form that we can use and then we would include that in the diet. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, so to try and uh, use materials that otherwise would have to be discarded yeah. and, uh, and got rid of. So from a sustainability point of view that's very yeah. important to us and to the, to the industry as a whole really. As rules and regs change and the science gets better, so the feeds need to evolve. The latest thinking is that insects will play a far greater role in feeding our birds. If this is where they're receiving the raw ingredients, two floors above us is where the carefully regulated mixing takes place. It needs workers to weigh and deliver precise amounts of each compound. It's all computer controlled to ensure consistency. But what about productivity? Is the supply chain there for a gamekeeper under pressure? So Lee, in the, in the busy time of year for us, which would be sort of like July, August, and you're at full speed. Yeah. How reliable are we to get our food if we order it, say, on a Tuesday? Is the process that quick you can get stuff out? Yes, yeah, so the, the order process generally is, uh, is day one for day three. That's really? The, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the order process we follow. And, that, and that's including like, special order for...? Mm. Uh, yes, yeah. 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 yeah, for medicated or...? Yeah, that's, that's or part of our yeah. daily, yeah. yeah. Usual that's, thing. That's yeah. just usual. Run the mail, as they I say. Didn't say yeah, that's <laughs> just, just normal for us. Hence that's the pun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
At the very top of the mill, there's a whole load of shaking going on. The sieve process is basically to take all of the, the overs and fines out the product so that there's no dust. Uh, and the only product that you get is a customised, the finished quality product. Uh, From here, there. it's down to the this packing floor and the, the filling of those so famous a... feed sacks. Forget the supermarkets reducing plastic waste, this was the first bag for life. We can use it for corn and, and yeah, yeah, flags yeah, and, yeah. and that's right, yeah. windows we'll be, of the old shed. And yeah, that's right, yeah. I mean, we, what we have a tendency to do with regard to the uh, conventional stitch bags is that these are uh, you know, reused for wheat, yeah. where we have the other two plants that have the form fill heat seal bag. Yeah. We uh, you know, generally give out free bags because oh, right, yeah. yeah. the um, form fill heat seal bags are a lot shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a nice long bag. You yeah. get probably 30 kilos of yeah. wheat in there, which yeah. is ideal. Yeah. We have a uh, crumb bag, which yeah. is a pale blue. Yeah. Then we have a dark blue bag, uh, which is the two millimeter. Uh, we have the super link, which is pink. Yeah. And we have a red for early grower, and we have green for grower. Yeah. And we have an orange bag uh, for for release. And, yeah. and also for breeder. Yeah. So what we try to do is to make sure that you know the guys feed the right product at the right stage of their life. Yeah. And it's obvious to the you know whoever's doing it. Yeah. 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 Shed, yeah. Pick up that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we, we all know that keepers, underkeepers are very, very busy. There's a lot of challenges yeah. out there. Yeah. And yeah. you know if the head keeper has to instruct the underkeeper to do yeah. do things from 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 day to day, it's quite easy for them. For them to say, we'll just, yeah, yeah. Don't do mini, but do the That's, yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. yeah. So that's what it's like. Yeah. To ensure there is plenty of feed for the game market, the mill is working around the clock. And just like other sectors of the shooting industry, this is the time to get ahead of the game. It's very similar to probably a uh, cartridge company manufacturing before the uh, shooting season starts. We're very much the same. In here, we probably would have anything in the region of about six, seven hundred tonnes. And obviously, during the season, totally, we would get through probably about uh, 1.4 million bags of feed. So we have to forward make to make sure that we uh, fulfil our customers' requirements. Good physical quality, nice smell, smell the fish meal. It's got the uh, insurer concept in there to help the, the bird's gut. Yeah. An ideal product for that stage of life. Well, it's been a fascinating day looking at all the products and what work actually goes into them. Talking about work, these bags really remind me what I've got in front of me and every gamekeeper in the country. For more information about Marsden's feeds or to book a consultation with one of their guys on the ground, go to marsdensfeeds.co.uk.